Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. I am Faraz. So today we are solving the third question of Lead Code Contest 246. So it is always a good practice to solve Lead Code Contest if you want to prepare for your online assessments and if you want to prepare for your technical interviews. So let us see what this question is saying. Basically we are given two grids. They represent uh, island and water. Zero represents water, one represents island. So these are two different places, okay? Now in these grids, uh, an island in G2 is considered as a sub island if there is an island in G1 that contains all the cells that make up this island in G2. So basically uh, let us see this one, the one which is marked with red. This one, 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 then one, 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 this one. Okay. So this one, all the cells are present inside the grid one as well. Okay. We can see all the cells are present. So this is called a sub island. In grid two, this is called a sub island of grid one. Similarly, this particular island is also a sub island because it is also present in grid one. I hope the question is very clear to all of you. Now let me just take an example and try to explain you that what is actually an island. So an island is a figure which is connected in four directions. Okay. For example, if I say, if I pick up the first one, this one, okay. So this is considered a single island. We cannot consider it as two different islands. Okay. We cannot consider this uh, differently and this one differently. We have to consider them as a single island. The reason is it is connected four directionally. These are connected. This is connected to this. This is connected to this. This is also connected to this. So this is a single island over here. Similarly, this is a single island. Okay. There are no other cells which are connected to this in uh, these four directions. There, There is only water. Uh, outside the grid is also water. So this is also a single cell. Okay, so this is also an island. This is also an island. Now this one, it is connected to this. It is connected to this, and this is not connected to any other cell. So this is together. These three cells together is an island. This is an island. So in total, in grid two, we have one, two, three, four, five. Total number of five islands. Okay. So this is what an island is. Now, if you guys know what a DFS is, a depth first search, then you must have get some hint of this question. Otherwise, if you don't know what a DFS is, let me just explain you very briefly and then you can go and read about or watch a video about DFS. So DFS is also called a flood fill algorithm. You must have used MS Paint, Microsoft Paint. In the Microsoft Paint, if we have a figure like this, okay, if we have these figures and if we click a color into this figure, if we click this uh, red or pink color into this, the entire part is going to get colored with this. Okay, so actually these are pixels and these pixels, if I touch here, all the pixels which are connected to this in all these four directions are going to get colored by the same color. So this is called a DFS, a depth first search. Similarly, I can use DFS to spot these islands. What I can do is, uh, I can start a DFS from this particular point. Okay, and when the DFS is going to run, it will be covering this, 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 this. The DFS will try to go outside this, but then it will come back. Why? Because it is water. It is water. So it will come back. So it, it is going to color entire this part. Okay. So in a single DFS, we are going to get one island. Again, we will start a DFS from here. Now this DFS will be limited to this particular cell only. It will try to go outside, but it will remain inside this. So the second island will be spotted like this. Similarly, the third island, fourth island will also be spotted like this. And if we talk about the fifth island, DFS will start from here. It will explore in these directions. And similarly, fifth, uh, fifth island will be explored. So we can simply use a DFS to explore these islands. All right. So before we move ahead, let us talk about interviewing.io. Interviewing.io is a platform where you can practice realistic coding interviews with interviewers from Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and other major tech giants and they will give you a detailed feedback on the areas where you have to work. And the best part about this is you don't have to pay them anything until you are hired. They have the world's largest network of interviewers from these companies, so you can get your interview scheduled with a notice of 24 hours. So if you are preparing for any such company, you can definitely check out interviewing.io. The link is in the description. So now the first approach that comes into our mind is we can simply explore these islands and keep the cells in a particular container like this is 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 0 comma 3 1 comma 0 1 2 this is 0 comma this is 0 comma 0 this is 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 and 1 comma 4 so these particular coordinates we can keep 
into a particular structure maybe an array of array or a vector of vector we can keep this uh, we can keep all these islands like this okay we can maintain a vector of vector and then store these islands now then i will start iterating over all these islands one by one i will go to the first island and i will see what all are the coordinates inside this which are also there inside the uh, this is grid one right inside the grid one okay so i will go to the first island i will see 0 comma 0 okay 0 comma 0 is one here all right then i will go to 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 is also one here similarly i will explore all these and i will be able to find that all these are one here so yes this particular island is considered as a sub island okay this qualifies as a sub island all right so we got one as the answer similarly we will go here and we will try to see what all coordinates are there for this particular island and the coordinates for this particular islands are 0 1 2 2 comma 1 only 2 comma 1 and we will see if 2 comma 1 is uh, 1 here it is not so this is not a sub island this is a sub island this is a sub island this is not a sub island there are basically these three sub islands okay so this could be done very easily very efficiently just a DFS and after the DFS you can simply uh, go to each of these islands and then verify that if this particular island is a sub island or not now let us optimize it a bit and let us try to reduce the space that we are using okay all right, so in the earlier solution, we were using some extra space to store all of these islands into some vector of vector. Now, now we won't be store. Uh, now we won't be using that space. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to start the DFS from this particular point, and while we are running the DFS, we will keep matching if this is also one. Okay, we will go here. We will see if this is also one. We will go here. We will see if this is also one. Then it will come here. We will see if it is one. We, and then we will come here. It is one. Then we will come to the end, and it is one. Now the entire DFS is over, and in the entire DFS, we were able to color, or we were able to explore all these cells of this particular island, and we were able to find that all these cells are one as well. Okay. All right. Now let us go to this particular island. Okay, let us say the DFS is starting from this point. The DFS is starting from this point. The, then we will go here. Okay, it is one. We will go here. It is zero. Not a problem. We will run the entire DFS because we want to explore the entire island. So we will go here. Then we will go here. Now this entire island is covered, but we were able to get some zeros. We were not able to get all ones. We were able to spot some zeros. And if we sp spot some zero, we will keep a variable, maybe a flag variable. This flag variable will be passed as a reference. Now, if we pass this as a reference, the value is going to remain same for the uh, for the entire recursive calls. So, we will change this flag as zero as soon as we strike any zero in the grid one. Okay, I hope uh, you must have understand this. Like, let me just explain you with the help of code. So here we are running DFS, the basic DFS, and in the DFS, uh, we are passing a flag. Okay. This is the flag which we are passing, and as soon as we find any uh, g1, any cell in g1 which is equal to zero, we will be marking this flag as zero. But we will run the entire DFS just to uh, explore the entire island. Okay, that is necessary. Why it is necessary? Because if we do not run the entire island and if we return from here as soon as we find a zero, then this part will be remained unexplored, and the next time this part will be considered as a different island in grid one. I mean in grid 2. This will be considered as a different island, but we don't want that. We want to explore the entire island once we start from a particular point in an island in grid 2. Okay? We have to explore the entire island. That is the important thing. Otherwise, this will get break from here and this particular part will con will be considered as a different island. Okay? So I hope it is clear and you can just go and code it out and if you want to uh, see the code if you if you feel any difficulty in coding it out, you can just see this is the code which I am using. This is the simple DFS. You can just go and learn about DFS if you don't know about this. Very useful algorithm, a very important algorithm in all the interviews. So this is it about the problem. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Thank you.